Yeah, I'm <laughs> Morning, everybody. It's Tony here with Rubble Financial again. Uh, thanks for joining us. So today, my guest is Zach Traxler from Traxler Printing, amongst other companies. Yeah. And so, uh, what's interesting about Zach is the fact that, aside from his printing business, how he's grown it, and some offshoots of that, and some other things that he has going on. So, welcome. Thank you for Thank coming you. in yeah, today. Absolutely. So, so let's start by doing this so we, we learn a little bit about who you are. Just We talked about your background. Give me a quick overview of how you know you came from school to doing this then. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually a college dropout. Um, dropped out of CCAD, Ohio State, and Columbus State. Um, uh, and just I grew up in the trade, so I don't think I was bred for institutionalized mm -hmm. education. Um, but after that, I, I went back into the trade to kind of pay the bills um, and then happened to take a intern position uh, for an internet company and quickly grew into an analyst position there. Um, made it about five years, really enjoyed the job. Uh, like, you know, like I said before, I was the first one and last one out for a few years. Um, but then found uh, the passion of my hobby, which was screen printing that I grew up in. My father founded Surf Ohio in 1978. Um, and I monetized it. Uh, working kind of moonlighting in the basement, uh, as it were, and in the first few months, I made about forty thousand dollars out of the basement, and, and founded the company in two thousand September two thousand ten, and then March two thousand eleven, decided to quit my full time job and go full time in the screen printing, and it's been uh, nothing but up from there. So, yeah. well, in a, in a lesson from when you were working in your basement, as you told me before, some of the work you did wasn't necessarily for money, but it was right. for uh, for advertising. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I like. Uh, one of the biggest things you can do as a small business owner, uh, depending on what, what your services are and capabilities are, is barter. And that's mm -hmm. what's really gotten us a lot of growth to where we are today. Um, so our first client was WCB 90.5 FM, which happens to be the core demographic of uh, customers that we needed at Traxler Printing. Um, and so we bartered for most of the invoice value for on our sponsorship. And that's what really led to a lot of the growth in 2011 was about a quarter um, uh, one business quarter of ads, like one or two a day on WCV at, at, at peak times. Um, and now even bartering, and we're a larger company, um, it, you know, the ability to barter for a plumbing fix because the plumber needs t-shirts mm -hmm. or electrician or, you know, any of that kind of stuff, right. it really, right. really helps bottom line. Well, I, I think the key there is thinking outside the box, right, to grow and help your business, yeah, right? Because maybe your business wouldn't be where it is today had you not bought outside the box and exchanged those oh, services. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think that that part of it's awesome. So, so where is the business today? Then let's let's talk about where it's at. Well, as we speak right now, we're moving into our right. sixth location. So uh, all of my staff have torn down all the equipment, and it's on forklifts getting moved across the parking lot into a new new factory. We're going from a garage shop facility to factory status, which is really cool. Um, but today, you know, uh, September two thousand ten, it was an idea, and today um, we're one of the fastest growing, highest rated, or top 30 screen printing shop in North America. Mm -hmm. um, we're FLA accredited, which is Fair Labor Association, so it attracts lots of large volume, uh, NCAA clients, um, large retailers, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's no shortage of business for us. Uh, the difference, too, between the basement and today is we're now vertically integrated, so we used to just hand screen print every shirt, so now we've got automatics that do it, we've got wide format printing, UV printing, pad printing, direct garment printing. Um, lasering, CNC, all kinds of different services that help us keep all of these jobs in house, so we don't yeah. have to piecemeal them out, or, or um, you know, we're truly a one-stop shop in that sense as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, when I see on your website, which we'll come back to la later at uh, TrapsilerPrinting.com, the, the equipment you have, you know, it's amazing to think that you were able to do some of that, at least facilitate it, right, in in the in the basement. Yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, well, in the, in, in the basement, it was uh, less than 100 square feet, and actually handmade by press. Again, coming from the trade, I, I really wanted to okay. understand how everything worked, and so I bought hinges and frames and pallets, and I cut my I cut my own pallets and stuff, and, and kind of manufactured my own press in the basement. Uh, quickly learned that that was not efficient, and there's there's a reason why you know engineers are hired and go out and create all these other machines. Uh, but you know, outside of a, a small, you know low multicolor setup, um, you know, now we've got one of the world's largest all-electric screen printing presses, we've got multiple automatics, um, everything that we focus on now with growth and adding new equipment is all tech driven mm -hmm. um, to be as lean as possible, so it's, it's really cool to see um, grow up in the industry, be in it 30 years ago, 
and now today and see what, what these machines can do. It's insane. Right. And the price. Well, where's the first equipment right now that you built? Has it been dismantled or is it music? Uh, oh, it's probably, it's probably like in a box somewhere in the back <laughs> of the warehouse. One day it'll come out. <laughs> well, it should come out today because we've got to finish moving, so we'll find it hopefully. Yeah, right, right. It'll come out and maybe be a permanent viewing for yeah. somebody. So. Yeah. so something other... You know, interesting is you, you know, when you're a small business, sometimes you get caught up in just getting the business done. But obviously, you've thought about this and you've talked about lead manufacturing in Sigma 6. So, talk about where you're at with that with the company. Um, so, it's, I've only. Six Sigma. Six, right. Yes, it's all right. Um, well, it's really like, you know, four years ago, um, I was like the kind of guy that was like, oh, I don't micromanage, I don't micromanage. And in reality, like, I had my hand in every pot and I was able to just one day, like, well, not overnight, but really just separate myself and let these core teams own what they're doing. Like, this is your business. So this is your business inside of this business, and you need to work as these kind of businesses together. And after that, um, it afforded me a lot of time to have the opportunity to, to research and study Six Sigma, lean manufacturing, look at where we're sourcing stuff, creating more valuable partnerships with our with our distributors here in Ohio and outside of Ohio. Um, and, and it's really become a passion. And, and what it's done for us is it's really helped us um, look the margins and understand that um, you know we can't sacrifice the X, Y, and Z here just because we're trying to win this job. I mean, we, we turn down jobs every day just because it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then we win jobs, big jobs every every other day or every week because we can you know look at the balance of uh, blended margins or whatever and understand fully like if we do this in this department or move this here or this, you know. So it's really important to really have a holistic view. Um, and that was just another hobby for me. Um, luckily it's a hobby that really helps the bottom line in the company, but now it's, it, it also affords me the opportunity to go out and consult for other companies, whether they're in the, the industry or, uh, or not, and um, help them grow and sometimes help them decide that, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, and that happens to be a service that tracks their printing, and so now they're a client, which is really cool. Yeah, awesome. So you, let's talk about your employees. Yeah. Um, I was surprised when you told me you had 30, 35. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a large amount in a short amount of time you've had the business. Uh, so talk about that. You you know, most employers these days are having a, a more difficult time finding good people, but you guys are not. So talk yeah, about that. Yeah, so we, we've focused extremely hard. Um, our industry has a high, high turnover rate. Um, and if you are retaining employees, it's... Um, you're probably paying, honestly, you're probably paying somebody way too much to do less of a job. Um, and then that's affecting your bottom line and you're not going to last a long time. Um, for us, what we focus on is creating a culture, um, being prideful about the things that you're working on, where you're from, um, the technical aspect behind everything. A lot of shops that I've been in, um, there's a lot of friction and infighting, um, and we kind of tried to turn that on itself and create competitions, healthy competitions. <coughs> And uh, at the same time, <coughs> excuse me, um, people are cross-training each other, knowing that one day um, Ike might be sick, so Rodney needs to jump in on Ike's job and, and carry the weight, or you know, vice versa. And, and that's created this like <coughs> sense of pride in a lot of these guys, um, because again, this isn't something you can learn in school. There's no school or university mm -hmm. you can go to learn this stuff. And so, uh, really learning the process from just catching the T-shirt all the way up to learning how to set the press and print. Um, is really big for these guys. And, and the goal for us is that everybody learns everything in the company and we become so efficient that we can pay you know, exponential amounts of money to retain all of these staff. But we have a very high retention rate. We have a long waiting list of people mm -hmm. willing to work for us, so we have no shortage of, uh, of hiring needs. There are some in certain departments, like customer service and stuff like that, but you know, in the production facility and on the production side of things, it's, it's a really fun place to work. and. Um, and, and there's people knocking at the door every day or constantly reminding us that, that as soon as there's a, a position open, they'd like to work for us, which is yeah. really nice. No, that's, a, that's awesome. It's a great yeah. problem to have. So, um, Another aspect of your business is you try to buy locally. Yeah. You try to, so let's talk about that. Yes, yeah, so we founded the entire company on the principle of buy local, buy Ohio. I grew up in southern Ohio where agriculture and the whole movement of Ohio pride behind you know produce and stuff like that was very, very important to um, southern Ohio farmers. And now it's obviously this huge national and global thing from where, you know, buy within your state or your community. Uh, for us, we were able to recognize right away, um, especially working out in the basement, that the fastest place to get stuff was locally. It might not be the cheapest, um, but we can get all of our ink, all of our printing equipment, all of our supplies, on, and almost all of our blanks from other Ohio-based businesses. Um, and that we 
primarily do that to help stimulate Ohio's economy and retain other Ohio jobs. Um, but it was also to prove a point that to to most others and other business owners that said it couldn't be done as far as sourcing locally for their industry that you just look harder and it might be more expensive in the beginning. But as we've experienced with the growth that we have, it's actually cheaper now because like NASDAQ or Richardson Supply or any of the companies that we, we source from um, understand the importance of us sourcing from them and promoting them as well, um, that they're happy to, to dive into their margins. And as we grow now, some, for some of them, we're one of, you know, some of their largest clients, yeah. um, which is really cool. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So um, you, and you're pretty savvy at social media, which is increasingly and, and very important for small businesses, yeah. for all businesses, yeah. but as you're growing, it can really help you. Uh, you're also part of Facebook Small Business Council. You're Correct. a member. Yeah. So, so talk, let's talk about social media and how it's helping. Yeah, I mean, so I quite literally founded a multi-million dollar company on an iPhone, Facebook, and Instagram, and then found free photo editing and video editing apps on my iPhone. And pretty much every day since September 21st, 2010, mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing. Um, it's almost true. I don't have enough time to do it every single day now, so I've actually hired a, a friend's firm to do most of our posting and stuff okay. like that. But um, what, we, what we were able to do through that was create viral campaigns for charity or viral campaigns behind our retail products, which help drive massive growth and revenue, especially profit um, on the retail side for the company, and which then, of course, afforded us to continue to invest in the tech and get better in, internally in the company and increase margins. But uh, apparently it didn't go without recognition, and I was invited to speak at a uh, Facebook event at COSI, um, which was received really well, and then invited back for other speaking engagements, and then I uh, was interviewed and, and picked to be on the Facebook Small Business Council. There's 82 of us, roughly, that represent more than 10 million uh, business owners in North America, so we, we work directly with Facebook's SMB and marketing team to help them understand the friction points that we may have as small business owners and features that would be cool or helpful. Um, on the platform for um, us and all other small business owners across the United States. It's a very diverse group. We've got restaurant owners, we've got trade industry, we've got nonprofits, we've got all kinds of cool stuff. So. Okay. Well, and it sounds like you know you're a uh, you know social media pretty well, but you're really especially a Facebook expert. Yeah. So any, I mean, where where would you point people to go to? to if they're having issues with Facebook joining. Oh yeah. So um, one of the one of the really cool new programs. I mean, if you if you're really paying t attention to Facebook and the news, they're really trying to get back to community. So they've done a lot of things. They've uh, there's Facebook community boosts all across the United States. Facebook is actually building presences in, in those the top metropolitan cities in every state. But the coolest thing that I've seen recently is Facebook.com/blueprint which is the Blueprint program. Um, so again, facebook.com slash Blueprint. And it's like 40 hours of coursework. It's all chopped up into five to 15 minute segments. Um, and you can go in and, and it's, it's from the creators of Facebook. So it teaches you every aspect of how to use Facebook from creating a profile or a fan page to um, how to advertise or target audiences. Um, and, it's, and again, it's free. So you take a five minute course at the end, it'll quiz you. If you answer all the questions, you move on to the next course, and if you don't answer all the questions correctly, you can go back and retake it. Um, and then if you're enrolled and they update something on the platform, you can then um, you get a notification, you can go back in and, and retake the course, so you understand the updates as well. But um, if you really want to understand how the platform works, even if you're a know-it-all like I thought I was, mm -hmm. I went through and took some of the courses, I was just like, like, wow, if I just did it that way, it would have been 10 times easier and probably yeah. 100 times cheaper. Right. So, right. Uh, but yeah. And then the other biggest tip I have actually for really quick for small business owners is to check out you know job postings on Facebook. We, we get tons and tons of resumes very, very quickly and highly qualified individuals um, by posting our jobs on, on Facebook instead of paying places like Indeed or Monster.com. So. Yeah, okay, well, cool that that's worked out. Well, let's take a look at your website because we, yeah. we want people to learn what they can do or how, how they can reach yeah. out to you and work with you. So um, let's, let's go to, again, it's Traxler printing.com and so here's the the website hopefully you're there now Eileen if I'm, I haven't jumped too fast for you um, and so we, we won't go through too much but you can see um, if you, they do the standard things that you would think with a promotional printing company yeah. but but if you have any questions or something you know you could all easily reach out to the company so uh, but these are some of the products and services um, of course, uh, these are the markets. Uh, all the printing, uh, everything is done here in Columbus, correct? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but obviously, everybody's less than two hours away, three hours away right. here in Ohio. So, um, and also, 
you know, uh, the different brands, this part of it, well, let me, let me, I gotta go through there, so. That's just a handful of brands. Yeah, ha yeah. Our site does need updating, so as we move, we've gotta go in and change our address everywhere, and we're gonna have to be cleaning up, and there's actually a really cool new design studio coming out very soon for the apparel side of things. Okay. We're completely, as part of this move is we're completely, we looked at the Six Sigma of our ERP, or our production system, and we're completely changing it. Um, so we're going to be migrating to a new platform which drives the design studio on the website um, and hopefully more products in addition to just apparel will be available through that soon as well. But um, I mean pretty much any major brand that you're looking for you can get through us. Um, uh, the other thing is we're a shop that allows you to bring in your own products depending on what it is and we'll embellish them as well. A lot of other shops won't do that. So. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you have minimums for people? I mean, our businesses. So no, on, on uh, direct to garment, there are no minimums. On screen paints, twelve pieces. Um, pad printing, depending on what it is and what we have to do to create the, the jig to hold your product, there there may be minimums. Lasering, there's no minimums. Um, UV, there's typically no minimums. Wide format, there's no minimums. So, okay. um, and we're a very diverse shop. So, like, if even if you don't need T-shirts, you need business cards, or you need banners, you, whatever you need right. for your business, anything that can be printed at all, come to us first. And if we can't do it. Our family has been in the industry for 41 years. I've been in the industry professionally for nine years now. Um, like 100 percent, we're 24 hours 365. Yeah, we we know we can do it. We've vetted a lot of these partners personally right. for our own projects. Um, so we're not going to send you off to Vistaprint.com because that would be silly. You can get all of their products from <laughs> us. But uh, but you know, just looking at the you know quality, of it. as you can see on Trustpilot, we're a five five star highly rated company. Um, whereas Vista Friends has got 1.3 stars and rated 4, so okay. throw that out there. <laughs> well, the last two sections are support and, and the about us, you can go through that. Anything you want to show on the website that I haven't done a good job? No, I mean, I yeah, it's, uh, it, so. yeah, essentially, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward website. Um, the areas of service pages, you can really honestly ignore those, those are for SEO. Um, you can see some of our pictures of what we do, but if you really want to see some cool stuff, um, definitely want to follow us on Instagram. So if you go to Instagram.com slash Traxler Printing or on Instagram you search Traxler Printing, uh, you'll see this is where we don't actually sell products. We tell the story of the products that we create and the people that create them for you. Mm -hmm. um, and why that's important to us is that, you know, we're not an, on just any shop trying to race to the bottom with a number or push out high volume because we can. We're really passionate about what we do. Um, and it's afforded us the opportunity to, again, create a really cool atmosphere for our employees to work and, and show you know, the, the, the techniques behind creating everything because of technology and the internet and mm -hmm. going to customink.com or something like that, everybody thinks you just click and order t-shirts. Well, if you order one shirt at Tracks of Printing, it touches like 11 jobs at our company. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to understand that there is a deep process behind mm -hmm. creating one shirt or 100,000 shirts and right. this the people that do it. So yeah. um, definitely check us out on Instagram. It's really fun to see what we've got going on at all times. So. Okay. Well, great. Well, again, Zach, thank you for stopping in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been great speaking with you today. Um, so, you know, that's it. I appreciate all the time. Uh, it's I could talk to Zach for a long time. So, but <laughs> check him out at, at TraxlerPrinting.com. But otherwise, thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you so much. Um, and I'll say good luck in everybody's basketball picks and have a great <laughs> weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.